We're going to go in the second half on some of the specific histories of El Salvador and Guatemala, but I we just want to sort of give you a teaser in this opening segment here, because first, here's Elan Omar, and I just got to say, I did an analysis of it. People should check out at the Michael Brooks Show YouTube page on the freak out about her Israel statements, and you know, I think there's actually subtleties and nuances to get into here, including a critique of outrage culture, frankly, uh, as well as also the fact that uh, everybody can, you know, improve. God's working on all of us, as Jesus and Mero say. Uh, but the bottom line is, as on the substance of Israel as a policy question, she is 100% right in terms of the abuse of Palestinians. And she has also been a target of right-wing political terrorism, including from fellow members of Congress, and now, of course, uh, the idiot, dope, bigot-in-chief president. The fact that she would have the chutzpah, and I will teach her that if she doesn't know that Yiddish word yet, the chutzpah to come out and just give this pure uh, moral clarity and acuity in that exchange with the disgusting, grotesque Elliot Abrams. I mean, people should go hit her with a campaign contribution. I mean, this is just incredibly impressive leadership. Ilan Omar is a hero. And I also enjoyed this because, um, look, she released the statement. It was actually a great statement. She pulled off an incredible synthesis of expressing sensitivity to where people had felt she had gone wrong and also reaffirming her commitment to working on the underlying issue, which she's 100 percent right about with regards to democracy for all in the Middle East. CNN uh, is still trying to make a, 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 an issue of it. And uh, she was confronted uh, walking the halls of Congress by Manu Raju. And instead of saying, like, hey, um, have you always cared so passionately about the genocide in Guatemala, which Elliot Abrams supported, the cover-ups of the mass rapes and beheadings of toddlers in El Salvador, which he supported and covered up? Uh, that, wh how was it? How, uh, how about the blowback from a bunch of people who apparently think uh, you know, having coffee in a think tank boardroom is more important than genocide? Uh, what about that? No, they go back to this already dead story uh, that the political right is trying to make hay of, and she shows that she, uh, AOC is not the only one that knows how to handle public nuisances. Our own Manu Raju found her quite unwilling to discuss the controversy. Oh, shut when up. He asked Pause her about it. Sorry. Just as always, Jake Tapper, shut up. Jake Tapper, Jake Tapper on brand oh here, uh, pestering a Muslim. Pestering a Muslim with his concern, like this piety nonsense of Jake Tapper. Just shut up. All right, go ahead discuss the controversy when he asked her about it today. The president tried to hit. What's wrong with you? Well, I'm asking you a question oh, about your tweet. You had a tweet saying the president tried to hit. I, yes, I tweeted. There's a response. You can run that. Have a nice day. <laughs> they leave out the critical part where he's asking her about Trump's tweet in response to her response. <laughs> what about your tweet, though? What about your tweet to my tweet? What about that's no, right. not your original tweet. What yeah. about your reply? To what about tweet? your reply tweet, which got ratioed? Actually, it didn't it all get ratioed at one? But but great crack reporting. Instead of you know, go back and read manufacturing consent by Noam Chomsky. There's no doubt that the you know corporate press has of course always been uh, you know a kowtow to the U.S. foreign policy establishment, but like. We're still going to play a throwback clip of the 1980s of Peter Jennings talking about the mass merger that the Reagan administration backed in El Salvador. And in 2019, CNN is like, you know what? Uh, don't even worry about the Guatemala genocide stuff. Let's go try to talk about her Twitter drama with Trump. <laughs> Pathetic. Uh, uh, speaking, yeah. you said give money to Ilhan. Yes, uh, indeed. Jesse Kelly here, uh, if you want to put that up, Brendan. Um, uh, who's apparently, I think, a Republican. Uh, what does he say here? Uh, the Jesse Kelly he's show. The kid, he's the guy who was really upset that his kid was doing a robotics competition. He was talking about getting drunk all weekend. 
<laughs> embarrassed by his son who does robotics competition. Yeah. My well, son's a nerd. So Jesse says Republicans should be pouring money into Ilhan Omar's reelection campaign. If you're a Republican and you wanted to plant a destructive parasite, I mean, that's some interesting hmm. language that's, there. That's I was going to say. That's <clears> an interesting. Uh, and actually, if you think of, well, this doesn't apply because she's Muslim. She's not Arab. But if we expanded Semite to include Arabs, at least uh, the phrase parasite in relation to any Semitic people. I'm going to say not pretty strong. Not good. Not skillful. Uh, what exactly would you be doing differently than uh, sh- what she's doing? It's glorious. I'm donating. Please, Republicans, please, yeah. please donate to Ilhan Omar. You are totally right. Actually, as a matter of fact, you're, you're owning the libs. Yes. Every time a Republican donates money to Elon Omar, a, uh, I don't know, a transgender uh, uh, equal civil rights bathroom is closed or something. I don't know. We cry liberal tears. Uh, don't do it. Yeah, uni- oh, no. Please, uh, Republicans, don't send money to Elon Omar. Or a unisex oh, bathroom no. will be uh, segregated again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Please don't. <laughs> I guess it probably is pretty to do, easy to do reverse psychology in these idiots. But no, I mean, don't don't listen to Jesse Kelly. Oh, no. If you're a Republican, don't contribute money to Ilhan